The golden age of higher education is probably over. That is the startling verdict of the interim chairman of the Office of Students, Sir David Bien. He's now warning that the scale of the funding crisis is significant. So is there any way to address this? And Sir David Bien joins us now. Welcome to today. Good morning. Is it all come down to money? Uh, no. Um, look, the UK's um, higher education system has a global reputation. It plays a fundamental role in ensuring that we've got the skills in the economy that we'll need going forward. It's important to growth at both a national and a local level. But that resilience, the resilience of the sector has been tested by a number of shocks. The global pandemic, leaving the European Union, industrial acts and the crisis. Um, sorry, my earphones just dropped out. The cost of living crisis, the cost of pensions, the reducing number of international students and feeling it's remaining frozen. So the Office of Students published a report earlier this year projecting the number of deficits and uh, that's behind the assessment that the funding crisis, the financial sustainability of the sector is significant as those multiple risks uh, converge. It's not just something that's happening here in the UK as well. This is a, a, a global challenge. But as we look to the future, I think technology, digital technology, AI will all have an impact on teaching. I think students will push for shorter courses. Lifelong learning will be important. Uh, experiential learning will be important. And uh, many students will choose apprenticeship routes so they can earn and learn We've got many more commuter students. Uh, I visited Sunderland University recently, and 86% of their students are commuters. They live in the local community and attend that university. So we need to reimagine the future of higher education, and that's a discussion between government, the sector, and the regulators. So I'm optimistic and hopeful about the sector, uh, but there is a significant financial challenge to that sector. Can you... Can you give us a bit more detail about what you would regard as the golden age of higher education? Is that a time when an education in and of itself, without thinking about a job, without thinking about the money at the end of it, was important? Well, I still think um, education is important um, and people study the arts, uh, uh, classics, uh, and these might not directly lead to a job in the same way that engineering or perhaps medicine and nursing may lead to a job. But I'm referring at least to, I'm a 68, uh, I'm a baby boomer, I went to University in 1974, and for many people from a working class background like myself, that was the lift out of uh, our parents' experience. And uh, I think uh, higher education was seen as a rite, a rite of passage. Uh, but now, something like um, uh, well over 40% uh, of uh, under 18s are going to, uh, 18, sorry, not under 18s, 18s will go away to university. That's very, very different to what happened um, uh, in the 70s and the 80s. And those pressures that I've just outlined will have an impact. And uh, the key point that I'd want to land is that there is a future for higher education, but that future needs to be reimagined. I think we should anticipate the changes that uh, technology, digital technology and um, AI are going to make on teaching. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what I was referring to. We need to prepare for a future which is different to the past. And that conversation needs to involve students, those that work in higher education, as well as the government. The governments are the architects of the higher education system in England, and they've got a fundamental role to play uh, mm. alongside the system itself and the regulator. Tough decisions for students, universities and for the government. Sir David Bean, thank you. It is coming up to quarter to nine. Now we